I think the next thing I want to talk about um, is diversity and cancer mm -hmm. prevention because it's a topic that isn't addressed as often as often as it should be. Yeah. And you shared some really staggering statistics with me when we talked yesterday. Um, my big question is: Is genetic testing as a means of cancer prevention offered equally among races and populations? Yeah. So I think there's there's sort of two parts to the question that we think about. One is how likely is it? that somebody from a different background is gonna have one of these genetic changes. Um, and there's a lot of misunderstandings um, about the impact of race and ethnicity and background, um, in part because there is a population, people who are Ashkenazi or Eastern European Jewish, who have the highest risk of carrying changes in the BRCA1 and 2 genes. However, everybody from every different background has a chance to have those changes. Um, in particular, the biggest lack of access that we see is in Black women. And Black women are 16 times less likely to have a discussion, or I should say have, that their healthcare provider has a discussion with them um, that they might be at risk for these. And yet Black women are much more likely to have breast cancer before age 45, which is a red flag for hereditary cancer. And they're like more likely to have what we call triple negative breast cancer. And that's another red flag for hereditary cancer. So this is a population of women, especially that we should be referring pretty frequently. Um, and when we looked at high risk clinics where there were referrals of women of all different backgrounds, we actually found that black women tested positive as frequently or more than almost every other group. And yet they're the ones who are least likely to be offered genetic counseling and testing. So we absolutely need to do a better job overall of identifying people who are at risk for hereditary cancer, but we particularly need to make sure that people are aware that anybody can carry these genetic changes um, and it's not at all isolated to one particular group. Mm, that's I, in that staggering to me that that's the, the case and so eye-opening. I guess to summarize everything, if you were to share one piece of advice um, from your industry, since you're the subject matter expert, what would that what would that look like? If you were to take cancer prevention and genetic genetic counseling, yeah. if you could take and just say this is what you need to do, what would that nugget of knowledge be? The first thing is try to get what you can about your family history. Um, you know, these can sometimes be challenging conversations to have. In some families, there's a lot of secrecy around cancer diagnoses and other health issues. Um, and it's important to try to capture as much information as possible. That being said, sometimes we just can't. We can't always get information about our family history or somebody might be adopted or not know part of their family history. And if that's the case, the best thing you can do is find a genetic counselor to talk to. Maybe they'll recommend testing, maybe they won't, um, but at least you'll know that your bases are covered. Um, and make sure that your doctors are aware of your family history and that if new cancer diagnoses come up, that you make sure they're aware of those too. We're learning more and more every day about what causes cancer. And genetics is a relatively new field and it's just exploding. So what we did 10 years ago is gonna be di very different from what we do 10 years from now. Um, I honestly think that we're moving and the things, the work that I do is moving in the direction of testing everybody for BRCA1 and 2. And I hope that someday we get to that point. Um, but in the meantime, the best thing that I think women can do around breast cancer and really what anybody who's concerned about their family history can do, this is not inclusive to, to BRCA1 and 2, is talk to their family members, make sure your doctors are aware of that risk. And if you feel like you aren't getting um, those family history issues addressed, know that there are genetic counselors who are specifically trained to look at your family, to talk to you about risk and help you get the services that you need. This has been such valuable information and it's it's eye-opening for me. I know when, as I was going through my whole diagnosis, I wish you and I had, that, had had that conversation before all of yeah. that, but you were certainly someone to lean on in the midst of it. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for sharing today. What an incredible level of awareness you've brought to the table for us as your audience. And, I, and I'm so appreciative of your time. Erica, thank you so much. Big thank hugs you. through the screen. Hugs. And uh, have an incredible rest of your cancer prevention day. Thanks so thank much. Thank you.